Do you consider yourself middle class? Are you good with money? Do you understand investing? Do you spend less than you make every month? Or are you one of those people that just try to make ends meet with not understanding where your money actually goes? I'm not here to judge because I make those mistakes all the time too, but I'm here today to give you a, a reason for optimism, a reason for hope. And if you want to avoid feeling trapped and burnt out working the same job day after day, year after day, you don't enjoy, then you need to know the five middle-class money traps that you need to avoid at all costs to remove the chances of crippling your financial future. Welcome, my friend. Andrew back here today, breaking down the five middle-class money traps that you need to avoid at all costs. And at the end of the video, I'm also gonna give you my breakdown for how I navigated these issues myself and some tips and tricks on how to get started and quick start your financial journey. Now, the first middle-class money trap to avoid at all costs is the belief that thinking higher education is required for guaranteed success and financial lifestyles that you want. In most cases, people get caught up under enormous amounts of student debt and have a hard time getting out from underneath them in the future. With this in mind, it really should be a decision to assess the proper opportunities and financial ramifications of choosing to go to a higher education versus going straight into the workforce. Myself personally, if I did it over again, I would have chosen to gone to college versus university just because you can start making money at an earlier age and you can go ahead and start accumulating income versus accumulating debt. And that can go a long way just to reduce the amount of stress that you're under at the start of your financial journey. The second middle-class money trap that I tend to laugh at a lot is people thinking they have to have a great car to be accepted in society. There's a lot of peer pressure out there to deliver a vehicle that looks good, smells good, and will be the talk of the town when you pull up to the club. And it's all about the image, not the usefulness of the car. It is absolutely crazy to go into debt and go ahead and buy a new car or an expensive car, drive it off the lot, and it goes down in value. You are buying a depreciating asset. So when you do this, you're essentially accumulating debt and making these payments on something that's going to give you less and less value over time. This asset is going to suck money from your pocket instead of giving you the opportunity to put your money into something else that actually has a chance of making you money and going up in value. A car is simply put a piece of utility in life to get you from point A to point B. You don't need to actually buy something and then have it lose value on you right away. Middle class money trap number three is people not starting to invest when they're young. And there are a lot of different reasons that people will give you, but if you invest when you're 20 versus 30 versus 40 or 50, the compound interest returns are enormously different. If you start in your 20s, you don't have to invest more than a couple hundred dollars each month, and you'll be on track to just let it accumulate over that period of time, that compound interest do its thing and you'll be on track to retire at 65 as a millionaire. Simple enough. Every year, every couple years or every decade that you wait on not investing, you're just increasing the amount that you're going to need to put in later on to get to those financial goals when retirement comes. It's actually our responsibility as human beings to take care of ourselves, to take care of your family and those around you. So start investing early, put money to work. And the easiest way to do it is just invest a portion of your salary, maybe 10, 15, 20%. Let it go, sit there, let compound interest do its thing and you're good to go. Now, middle class trap number four is a combination of the first three. It's when you get to a point where you have a job or a career and you feel like you can't leave. You feel trapped and you have to stay there because you have the car payment. You have the student debt you're trying to pay down, but it's crushing you. Maybe you started a family and you have a home, right? All these things are sucking at your cash flow. You don't have the investment saved up to say, I can step away and fund these things through a different income stream. So you're just at the point where you're going to say, I guess I'm stuck here. This is my future for from now on. That's it. That's all I got. It leads to resentment in your role, in your career. It leads you to just relying basically on that job for survival instead of going out and building different ways to escape. You end up being one job lost or one economic slide away from losing everything. And this definitely keeps you in that middle class in both your wallet and your mindset. What you need to be doing or ought to be doing at least is looking for opportunities to grow within your role. 
taking on more responsibilities, and you will be directly compensated or paid for the difficulty and volumes of problems that you solve. So if you up the difficulty and solve bigger problems, or you solve more problems with a higher amount of volume, you are going to get compensated for that at an increased rate. And it makes sense now to change your role multiple times over the years, sticking with the same company for your entire career is a thing of the past. Be loyal to yourself, go out there, shake it up, look for those opportunities to grow and increase your bank role. And there it gives you more opportunities to pay down your debt, to invest, it gives you more money in your pocket to do what you want with and set yourself up for financial success to get out of the middle class. And middle class trap number five is a big one. It's the biggest mistake or one of the biggest investments decisions that we tend to mess up in our lives. And that's buying the wrong type of house at the wrong time. This includes buying too much house or too big of a house when in fact, most people can get by with a smaller unit or a smaller house. It's one of those things again, where it's about keeping up appearances instead of going with what makes sense. Buying a house that's too big for you or too expensive often leaves you in the situation known as being house poor, where you don't have any extra money to invest, pay down debt, it's all going towards your property and it can lead to a lot of financial stress. It's kind of a lifestyle inflation type of thing. It's where people just want the big house, then they want the four core garage, then they want the nice driveway in the backyard and all the little trims and fixing that go with it. When in reality, is that the reality you want? Or is the reality to be able to escape the rat race whenever you choose to do so? Pros and cons are people, pros and cons. So my thoughts on these five middle-class traps Number one, you have to start paying down your debt immediately right after you get out of school. It is high interest debt that accumulates quickly and will stay with you for a long time. So start chopping away at it as soon as you can. Number two, you don't need a nice big fancy car to get around. You can rely on other ways of transit and ways of getting to point A to point B. Buy a used car, take public buses, do whatever you have to do to kind of scrape and scrounge and delay a little bit of gratification by making a investment first in yourself and in your bankroll and have your assets pay for those kind of luxuries later down the road. Next, you have to start investing early. Build up your skills and proficiency in one area, make it your prime income source and get really good at it all the while you start investing and leveraging those investments to potentially become the investments that free you from your job in the future. The earlier you get started, the earlier you finish. And if you want to retire early and retire rich and not be a member of the middle class, you want to start early and put 15 to 20% into your investment account each month. It'll get you there. And the key is just to be consistent with it and increase it as your income increases as well. Stay away from buying the luxury mansion by the Riverside for a few years until you have a lot of money and you're rolling it. At that point, it's just a drop in the bucket of your multiple income streams. Generally, the way people go is they'll start with their job, they'll have their career, they'll progress a bit, then they'll realize later on in life, oh crap, we haven't started investing at all. We need to get on this. And they realize these rules about money too late. When in reality, they could have been working on these things all along. And in fact, there are 13 different money truths that people learn too late in life. And if you want to protect your assets and start fresh right now and not worry about missing out on the boat and becoming a rich millionaire and having the lifestyle that you really, really want and doing things on your own time, check out the next video right here. Like and subscribe if you got some value of this video today. And I will check you guys on the next one.